All right, welcome back guys. Simon from BrainTheBest.com. And this video today is gonna to be a multi-part uh, tutorial, basically. What we're gonna do, I'm gonna show you how to read more inputs. And uh, what we're gonna use is an AT Tiny, the DigiSpark. Uh, DigiSpark is great, it's small, doesn't use a lot of power, but of course it doesn't have a lot of inputs either. Uh, so I'm gonna show you a way to add up to eight inputs by using a simple chip, the uh, CD4021. Uh, it's basically a shift register. But instead of shifting out, like you may have seen before uh, for lighting up LEDs, uh, this one shifts inside the uh, Arduino. So basically it can, read up, it can read up to eight digital inputs. And what we're going to use today is tack switches. And we'll read up to eight tack switches using only three pins. Now, let me just switch, show you the, uh, the breadboard. Uh, so the way this is set up, we got four buttons only on this one, but you can have up to eight. And here's the CD41 right here. And it's got four little 10K resistors for each one of these buttons. And here's the DigiSpark right there. So I'm only using three pins on my DigiSpark to read up to eight buttons. Now, if you need more, uh, you can always connect these guys in parallel. So you could have up to 16 if you use two of these and still use only three pins. Um, this tutorial today, the way it's gonna work, I'm gonna read each one of these buttons and when I press one of these, it's gonna send a string of characters to the, um, the computer via the DigiSpark by using a little library called DigiKeyboard. Uh, basically, the DigiSpark will act as a keyboard, so we can send anything we want. So let me switch back. Now, this is gonna be a multi-part tutorial. Basically, today we're seeing how it works. And after that, I'm gonna design a PC board using a service. Um, so we can design uh, the PC board, order the PC board, and then make an enclosure and make a kind of like a final product of this. Um, I'm doing that because I want one of these uh, because my, um, my video switcher uses keys to actually switch between cameras. So instead of using the keyboard, like I've been doing, I'll have a little box maybe underneath the desk or something so I can switch back and forth uh, more easily. Um, let me show you the switches I'm gonna use. So basically these switches, the Cherry MX switches, I got a couple of here. So as you can see, those are all different types. And there you go on the back. So I'm gonna make a button box using these keyboard twist, uh, switches. Um, now, the way I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna go online. I'm gonna use a service called uh, Easy EDA, and you can see a link right there. Uh, basically, it's, you know, you can make PC board different ways. Uh, the most popular one at the time that uh, you know, I was looking into it was Eagle. Um, but for my purposes, I don't need anything too complicated. So I looked at EasyDDA, and it's not a software you install. You just go online, and you can design your PC board right there. And once it's done, you can order the PC board from them, and uh, they'll send it to you, and then you can uh, solder your stuff to it. So in the next video, we're going to see how I designed the PC board for this project. And after that, I'm going to create an enclosure for it. Uh, so I'm guessing maybe two or three videos, uh, we should be done. So uh, stay tuned for that. So right now what we're going to do, we're going to cut. We're going to go look at the code for this. It's very simple, very short. And then we'll come back and test it out. So let's go check that out. All right, so here's the code we're going to use today. As you see, it's not very long. So I try to make it as short as possible. So let's start from the top. We're including the DigiKeyboard uh, library that's going to do a keyboard emulation on the DigiSpark. Uh, you can find a link for that library, uh, go to our website here at brainingbus.com slash tutorial. Uh, like I said, you'll find the schematic, the code, uh, more explanation and all that stuff. So go there if you want to uh, copy and paste the code that we're going to talk about. Um, next after that, we define the pins. So the data pin, the clock pin and the latch pin. So 0, 1 and 2. So pin 0, 1 and 2 of the DigiSpark is connected to the corresponding pins of the uh, little CMOS, the CD4021. And you see a little picture here of the pins. So these are the pins that we're connected to. Uh, then we define a variable. It's a byte variable. Uh, register value, uh, put it at 0 at the beginning. It's used to hold the data from the DC4021. So basically the way this works is that we call uh, for the information of the um, in the register and we put that in a byte since it's an 8-bit uh, shift register so a byte is 8-bit uh, then the main setup we define the pin used to connect to the cd4021 uh, the data pin is an input 
latch and clock are outputs. And then we get to the main loop already. Uh, we set the latch pin to one to get the recent data into the CD4021. Uh, so we're digital writing the latch pin to one. Then we do a microsecond delay, which is very fast. And then we set it at zero to get the data from the um, CD4021. So when we put the latch pin to one, the data is registered. And then when we put it at zero, we get the data from the, the shift register. And then we get the that register value. Uh, there's eight bits of it. We put it into the variable, the byte variable register value is equal to shift in, data pin, clock pin, and the first bit first. Then depending on the register values, so it's B for binary, one zero zero zero, which corresponds to button one. So we will do G keyboard print, button one pressed, and the value after that in binary again. So that's what this uh, library does. It actually emulates a keyboard, and we'll see that uh, information being printed out in, uh, in Notepad. So we'll see that right after. And the same for each one of these, depending on which button is pressed. Um, if you're wondering where I got these values, uh, since I'm using DG Keyboard, uh, basically what I did is that I printed out every time I pressed a button and saw what the value was by using this line here, DG print register value comma bin, and then I did my if statement depending on that. So that's the easy way to find out. And a delay of 250 at the end, and basically uh, that's it. So it loops back and waits for another button to be pressed. So there you go, uh, not too long. So we're gonna upload that to the DG Spark and uh, see what happens. All right, so we already uploaded the code that we were looking at on the DG Spark right here. Uh, if you need help with these guys, uh, we made a video about them uh, right here uh, to help you uh, configure and install and program them. So uh, if you need uh, some help, you can check out that video. Uh, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to plug it in. I'm going to press these buttons and this is going to be read by the register here. And we're going to get that information out and do an action like you saw in the code. So let's plug it in. There we go. And you'll see when I press the button, you'll see the result on the notepad there because the DigiSpark is going to send a string of characters uh, thanks to the uh, DG keyboard library. So let's go ahead. Button one is pressed. Button two. Button three. Sorry, you can't really see it here. Button four. Button three. There you go. Let me go button two. Button one. And there you go. So as you can see, it responds very fast every time I press a button and it reads the information and does an action based on that. Now we're using four here, but you can use up to eight per chip and you can uh, you could connect chip in parallel to have more, basically up to 16 if you use two and so on and so on. So there you go, guys. I hope some this is something you can use in a future project. It's always good to have more inputs and especially on a DigiSpark that has uh, not a lot of them or if you want to save some in your project. So hopefully this will help you guys. So like I said, there's going to be more on this. We're going to design a little PC board um, and we're going to build enclosure for this because I'm going to use this for my uh, video switcher. So with that said, let's go back to the main camera and wrap things up. All right, so there you go guys, that'll do it for today. Um, in the next video, I'm going to be designing the PC board that I want to create to house all this stuff. And when I receive this PC board, I'll uh, put everything together in a nice enclosure so I can use it uh, when I do my videos. So I hope you guys uh, join us for that. Uh, like I always say, guys, uh, we try to make videos um, every week. Sometimes it, you know, it doesn't happen because we have other stuff going on. Uh, but uh, please, if you like these videos, please subscribe and uh, you'll be notified when we create new ones. So that's it. That'll do it for today, guys. So my name is Ivan and I hope to catch you guys real soon. Take care.